Here is how to assemble one of my string ligature designs. You need the 3D print, a pair of yokes, a pair of uh, side guides, and a knurled nut, or you can buy your own three millimeter thumb nut, and two wedges. I, I like to print the wedges four at a time on a raft, um, but uh, you, you only need two for this design. Um, this, these two screws, which are um, two and a half millimeter threads, uh, five long, um, aren't in my final assembly, but they help me to put it together. You need this uh, uh, three millimeter, 30 millimeter long screw and uh, an insert here, a brass insert, which is uh, three millimeter threads inside, then it's five long by uh, five diameter on the outside, you know, unless you get a thumb nut. This Kevlar thread I've used, um, you know, I've got all these spec'd out in the uh, text on the uh, Thingiverse, but um, this works. Um, you may need to adjust a few things to get a tight fit on the thread, but um, either scale these up or down by a millimeter, I mean a percent or two. Um, sometimes there's a lip inside these. I, I print these without being on a raft with just a, a skirt. And um, so sometimes you get a little bit of a, you know, a skin. Um, so if you need to use a file or, or a pocket knife to clean things up, same thing, the holes inside these. All right. Okay, I normally use a bench vise to press this in, but let me try pliers to see if they work all in one sitting. I have done it this way before. I'm gonna line it all up. And... There, I got it in there, so we can keep going. Um, so first I uh, measure you know, the amount of cord I need, and I go a little more than four and a half times around the mouthpiece. So one, two, three, four and a half, maybe like four and two thirds, and that's how much cord I should use. Then I use a piece of tape at that spot that I have, and I wrap around the cord before I cut it. Okay, just a pair of scissors then. Cut it right in the middle and it forms like a little aglet on the end so it's easier to feed through the holes. I already had one on the other end from the last time I cut it. Okay, so I don't need that anymore. Now the you have to do some sewing to kind of get it through everything. You have to line these up the way you need them. It's easier if you have one laying already assembled next to you <laughs> as a goal, as a uh, target. But I'll, I'll try to go from memory. You flip it over and you start in the middle. Put one in on each of the center holes. Okay, like what, and then they come up through the, well, you know, you can tell by looking at the final assembly of picture that I have, how they're supposed to go. And these yokes right now are for a tenor sax mouthpiece. So, you know, they'll eventually, you don't have to put the screw through, but that's, that's what we're going for. You got that, now then you, to space these out, you skip holes. One, some of these holes are unused, so I go to the outside, then up, and then down. So this is way too tight, <laughs> because I should only have a little bit left. But let me finish it all, then I'll adjust it.
Let me take them out of the screw. All right, there, that's the basic threaded thing, but now it needs to be pulled out to get the right length. And you'll need to do some trial fitting, so. Luckily, it's, it's kind of like a pulley system. They just slide, not totally freely, but fairly freely. Okay. do is then I, I temporarily use these screws on the end to hold it in place. Now these are easy to strip out and you can also just leave them in and use this in your assembly but I'll, when I show you later how, how nice the wedges work you may want to try doing that. aren't threaded holes so you got to kind of persuade it a little to get in there and you're trying to make these so they don't slip but they're not so tight that you stripped anything that's still loose on this side and originally I used these to try to adjust and readjust and maybe use them on different mouthpieces, but eventually they strip inside there, so they're just not a long-term solution to make this adjustable. It's kind of a short-term to get the fit right. Okay, then the sides. So this is the inside facing the mouthpiece. The sides, the flat part, go against the mouthpiece, so you flip this over, and we're gonna press in the strings inside these sides. Okay, the, it's actually strung together and the holes you know, are a little off center coming out. So I have the holes off center facing up. Okay, that is the orientation you need before you press these in. And then use a tool of your choice. Like sometimes just press them in with the back of this modeling tool. It should be a snug fit, but one that you can kind of slide around a little after it gets on. Okay, there. You gotta just kind of eyeball the position. There we go. Okay, and then, then this side, now with the holes down, is what touches the mouthpiece. Okay, I've already jammed that on. It's ready for a test fit with a reed. Tighten it up with the yokes on top. Things will slide around a little, so Gotta go back. You know, it's it's not as easy to slap on as like a Rovner, but um, and and when you grip it and and, and adjust it for uh, angle and tuning, it may slip. But some other fancy lit ligatures have that issue too. But that's pretty good where I got it. If these are off, you know, I usually like to position these side pieces so that they're they make kind of a squarish shape here. Or it could be a little rectangle, like this one's a little taller, but like on a metal mouthpiece, smaller body, more of a square opening there, you know. Don't want them up too high or low. And you, and you kind of want them on the center line of the uh, sacks or, or on similar say, center line of the mouthpiece or a similar distance away from the reed. 
once you get them in a spot and you use it on the same mouthpiece, you usually don't have to mess with it. But if your cord, if your fit is not snug, it, it may slide around a little on you. Okay. And, uh, you know, as it should be, it's something that's going to loosen up a little bit the first ten times you put it on. That's pretty good. You know, close to a quarter of an inch. And the side piece is kind of where I like it. Okay. Now the last part is these wedges. And what I use, I use these wedges to kind of lock in the final, um, you know, adjustment so that I don't need these screws anymore and, uh, and it doesn't, you know, strip out or whatever. So, so you got to take it off. Come on. So where these two ends are sticking out, you know, if this, you want to put a wedge in that hole. And it's not easy. right next to the end. I want to jam that in there so that when it tries to pull, it won't pull out. So, kind of put the wedge in it with the little nub facing out. Then I just take a pair of pliers, jam it in there. Sometimes the nub will break off, like right there, which is fine. So now that's in there. And then I get another wedge off. Do the other one. straight but oh okay got that in there very good so now you don't need the side screws anymore and you can trim off the excess with a razor blade being how it's Kevlar that's that's not trivial sometimes that takes some persuading That's the easiest I've ever done. Maybe I should use these pliers every time. <laughs> Normally I saw back and forth for a minute. Maybe it's a sharper blade, I don't know. Hey, what do you like that? I'm a pro. Okay, and you saw that slipped out, so I gotta get that back in place. Our final assembly.
Okay. If you want a cap, you can try out my design for a TPU cap. I find I prefer the the um, full length cap. I have one of those on Thingy also. Um, and uh, but they. 3D printed caps sometimes deform over time. I'm right now I'm printing those with a thicker wall, like 1.8 millimeter thick wall, and they, they seem to hold up longer. Um, so and I, I put a slit in them that's kind of just halfway in the cap, down the cap. So uh, 